tells a true story which occurred during the first month of World War II when all of the odds were against the American forces. S-38 was an outmoded old submarine, but a stubborn, courageous commander somehow urged her through one of the most remarkable undersea actions of the war. When Japan struck Pearl Harbor, S-38 was based at Manila already outfitted for battle, the warheads aboard. The next day, on December 8, 1941, this World War I type S-boat proceeded to patrol activity. In early engagement, she suffered battle damage and was forced into Cayman's Cove on the western coast of Luzon for temporary repairs. S-38 was commanded by Lieutenant Rayford G. Chappell, known as Moon of Billings, Montana, and a Naval Academy graduate. The 18-year-old submarine was his first command. When she was launched, Moon Chapel was just a teenage kid. Rivet, make things ready to get underway. We're hauling out of here. Aye, sir. Paris, I want all officers to the wardroom at once. Aye, sir. All officers, please report to the captain in the wardroom. Ah, what's up, Captain? Get a load of that. Then go and go. Yeah. What's up, uh, Forbes? You got that oil cooler fixed? Sort of, Captain. We stuck it together with a piece of wire. Every time anybody hiccups on this old bucket, something falls apart. Well, your wire better hold. We've just been ordered into Lingai and Gulf. According to intelligence, the Japanese have troop ships in there. Quite a lot of them. Must be building up for an assault on Luzon. Yeah, probably. Anyway, we're going in there and shoot up some of them. This gulf's full of transports. That entrance is going to be loaded with destroyers. I promise you. They could would go around them across the close end of the reef. Across the reef? That won't be guarded. It's pretty shallow water. I'm sure you'll be able to find some way to navigate us in there, Bob. How many? Six fathoms, sir. Tell the captain I suggest we reduce speed. Keep those soundings coming. Four fathoms. And you old bucket float light like a feather. Four fathoms. Four fathoms. Five fathoms. Six fathoms. We're over it! Captain, we're over the reef. We're inside the gulf. Well, it wasn't so bad, was it, Bob? Nice work. All I had full. the surface a little longer than usual that morning and just after dawn they saw what they'd come for Fish in a barrel. Just like fish in a barrel. A 
fire all four tubes with different targets. If we're lucky, we can mess up four ships before they even know we're here. Coming on. We're coming on. Fire one. One fired. Fire two. Two fired. sure spotted us. Secure that reload. Take her down to 100 feet. 100 feet. 10 degrees down bubble. Four fat misses. Many torpedoes available in the early days of the war were defective, running as much as 10 feet below the depth they were set for. Moonchapel's bold attack had passed harmlessly beneath the transports. All S-38 had accomplished so far was to lose the element of surprise. Right, full runner. Right, full runner. They got a beat on us. Take it at 200 feet. 200 feet. Not too deep, Captain. We're still in pretty shallow water. Can't stay up there and let them glower us. Speaking. We've hit a submerged ledge or something. The port propeller's damaged. Is it out of action? No, but it's making an awful racket. Very well. Now they've got that prop to listen to. Port stop. Port stop. Just have to let her bounce along the bottom. We're rising. We're back up to 120 feet. Hold her down. She won't stay down. 110 feet. We're sliding up a mud bank, that's what it is. We must be right about here. Taking us right up to the surface. I certainly don't want to go way back. Left full rudder. Left full rudder. 85 feet, Captain. That one damaged the compass, Captain. Must be starting up enough mud to bring him right down on top of us. If they don't hit us, they'll shake us apart. 65 feet. We're going to broach in a minute. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Break for silent running. 
Break for sign and right. Eleven feet or so between our superstructure and the surface. Anybody want to go home, now's the time. A submarine trying to stay silent under the sea can become an uncomfortable place. Her fans can't clear the air, the cooling system can't relieve the heat, and worst of all, she can't fight back. But that's how the S-38 had to lie for hours. The only American ship in Lingayen Gulf. The sole object of the Japanese search. Excuse me, Captain. Uh, Captain. Well, I heard this uh, gyro compass was damaged. Yeah, this is one of the things that's damaged. Well, uh, okay if I take a crack at fixing it? Anytime, Bert. Sorry. Which screw is bad. And the wiring's fouled up, too. It's just too much of a pounding for this old tub to take. Oh, they're working us over, all right. I wish there was just something we could do about it. When the time comes, we will. Find some way to glue things back together again. Right now, I think the thing for us to do is play some cards. Cards? Settle right down, Bob. Get set for the licking I'm going to give you. Pick that up, will you? Yeah. Mm, there it is. All right. Throughout the seemingly eternal day, Boone Chapel's steady composure was a sure antidote to anxiety. And after nightfall, the Japanese gave up their probing. The captain called a meeting in the wardroom. Yes, yeah, sir. Had all the damage reports? That's right. All right, Harvin, what's a good mechanic's opinion? Oh, we can fix most of the damage if we can stay on the surface long enough. I figure she'll still run, Captain, and I hope she'll still float. Even so, I'm wondering just what we're going to accomplish. Here we sit in water that's too shallow and a boat that's too old and an enemy that's too set on getting us. Maybe the smartest thing to do is get out of this gulf while we still can. Make it kind of a wasted trip, wouldn't it, Don? I'd sure hate to leave without getting something in the bag. So would I. And I thought we'd do is hole up somewhere over here among these hundred islands and surface during the night and make our repairs. Try to look like one more little island. I want to stay here a little longer. Strike one blow for freedom. A little better aim next time, I hope. Let's take her up. two nights to make the repairs, with the intervening daylight spent on the bottom, providing badly needed rest for the crew. There were a few anxious moments, but the prowling Japanese never quite located S-38's hiding place. 
the repairs tax the ingenuity of all departments. But on the morning of December 24th, the old submarine was more or less ready for further action. Battery cells all tight, George? Yes, sir. All right, secure the charge. Aye, aye, sir. Everything all right in your department, Domingo? Yes, sir, Captain. We're preparing a very delicious ham for the celebration. What celebration is that? Christmas coming tomorrow, sir. Forgot about Christmas. And maybe we celebrate the sinking of a ship. Nearby the Lingayan Gulf is my home, Captain. Go ahead and get your celebration ready. Finished, Berg? Yes, sir. Looks like you've given us all we're going to get for a Christmas tree. <laughs> I think everything will hold together for a while. Good. We'll tour the Gulf of Periscope depth, see what we can find. Ground scope. Final station. Ground general alarm. Final stations. Sound general alarm. <laughs> But S-38 was in for still more frustration. Now what? That was no depth charge. Everybody all right? There's probably a plane. Those destroyers will be around again. Right, full runner. Right, full runner. Take her down to 100 feet. The depth gauges are knocked out. We'll dive to where you think 100 feet ought to be and get them fixed. You're gonna get me mad. That one was underneath us. Yeah. Level her up. I can't stop her. We're on the bottom again. Yeah. Getting pretty good at that. All stop. All stop. I will just hold on here and wait for the opposition to make the next move. Captain, they stopped that pinging. Good. Well, they think they've sunk us. Or maybe our tactics are a little bit more than they're accustomed to. A little more than I'm accustomed to. Let's pull out of the mud and go back up again. All back full. All back full. Misjudge the draft on those other ships, Fletch. Forward to ready, sir. Okay. Here we go. I'm a coming honor. Stand by. Fire one. One fire. Fire two. Two fired. Oh! Dead a midship! No miss this time. Get a load of this, Fletch. Boy, that ship's done for. All that's left now is the easy part, getting out of here. Right back to Hundred Islands and recharge. And tell Domingo we celebrate. Domingo! Put that ham on! Don't you think you'd better get some sleep till we reach Hundred Islands? You haven't had much rest lately. 
Knocking off that ship was just as good as a night's sleep. Mm. What's the plan for tomorrow? Cruise around up there, see what else there is to shoot at. Mm. Something on your mind, Don? Let's hear it. All right. In another boat, I'd say we could stay in here till the Gulf freezes over. But in this old bucket, I just think we're pressing our luck too far. You have to fight with the boat you've got. How much more can she take? And the crew, they'll do anything that's asked of them, but well, they've been through quite a bit already. I say we've had all the bad luck we might expect. Yes, sir. Captain, don't get me wrong. I'm with you all the way. But the captain was wrong about their luck, and the torment of the S-38 was far from over. Look us, the bridge. Ventilate the hull off board. Rig for battery charge. Stay on the bridge, I'm going below. If you sight anything, take us down. Explosion in the battery well. Bad? I couldn't see for the smoke. Get into your gloves and let's go. Damage control party on the double. <coughs> it's Harvin, he's hurt bad. Oh. Don't try to move him. <laughs> Too much hydrogen. Started. Blower's too fast. Take it easy, Harbin. Don't try to talk. That fire's not too bad, but get to work in here and get the smoke out. Aye, aye, sir. Take it easy, Harbin. Get the pharmacist, mate. Tell him to bring the morphine. Aye, sir. Started. Blower's too fast. Captain, uh, hydrogen. Just lie still, Harvey. Old bucket. Trying to blow herself out of the water. How is he? Brave his back is broken. Well, nobody has to tell me to get out of here now. We've had enough. Getting real homesick. See that somebody stays with him. Yes, sir. A head blooded but unbowed, the indomitable old S 38 raced for home. Look what the number one commissary officer found. Mm, that smells good. Merry Christmas, Captain. Well, thanks, Bob. Merry Christmas, fellas. Merry Christmas, Christmas dears. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, you old bucket. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. Captain W.G. Chappell, United States Navy, is with us, and I take great pleasure in introducing him to you. Moon, how are you? Fine, Tom. Thank you. Moon, I wonder if anything else could have happened to one submarine on one patrol. I don't see how. By the time you've been through depth charge attacks, groundings, broken instruments, mechanical damage, and a battery explosion, you sort of run out of ideas how to get in trouble. Well, sinking that transport was a fine accomplishment. It was the second ship sunk by our submarines in World War II. Yes, Tom, that's what they told us. They say it was a Haya Maru, a 5,445-ton freighter. It took tremendous courage and skill to go in there alone and make a kill like that. Tom, that's something you ought to know about from your own experiences. It did take a lot of luck, too. But we had as fine a crew in the S-38 as you'd ever hope to see. And the old boat still had a lot of stamina and fight left in it. To say nothing of an outstanding skipper. Moon, it's been a real honor to have had you with us. Thank you, Tom. Good to see you. Nice to see you, thanks. 
Please be with us again for another true and exciting story of the silent service. Take a dance and ask the line Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean's line From down, down underneath the sea Take the force for past the world In the future's yet to be That we we'll say as long as there's a submarine underneath the sea.